Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comps, and I've got a stack of these, which are Motorola MTS 2000 UHF portable radios. Uh, you know, 20 plus years ago, these things were the uh, top tier radio. Uh, they do do narrowband, but they're analog only radios. So, what we're going to do is, is we're going to go ahead and uh, go through this entire stack of radios here, and I figured I would start out with this particular one here. We'll just go ahead and do a full disassembly on it and uh, show you how these things come apart in the ins and outs in case you ever come across any of these. Now we'll go ahead and take this one apart here. This antenna is unserviceable, so it's going to the garbage. Volume knob, channel selector knob, concentric switch. I'll come off the top of the radio before you take it apart. Flip it over on its back side, you can see the battery contacts here. And you can see there's a point right here at the base of it where we can go ahead and take this radio apart. So we go into the housing, we pull that open just like that. And we remove the housing from the frame. Here's your emergency button housing and you can see there's a considerable amount of sand and debris inside of this radio. Now, when you see here, you have this ribbon cable right here that's attached to the speaker and the display and the radio. And what you want to do is, is you want to ensure that you're very careful in removing this riser. So, what I usually do is, is work it just a little bit on one side. And a little on the other. And then we can go ahead and take this ribbon cable out of the controller, just like that. And this is as much as you take these apart right here. Unless you're replacing the speaker or anything in there, there's really no sense in taking any of this apart. So we'll go ahead and set the housing aside. And we have our radio itself. And you can see your RF connector on top. There is a small O-ring that runs around the perimeter of the portable. And we will go ahead and remove that. Set that aside. And what you have is the body of the radio has these con these clips right here to attach it together. And there's three of these here. And you'll see it kind of pop up there. You have another riser towards the rear here and the controller. And this is another one of those that you're really careful with. And you'll go ahead and disconnect this ribbon cable. And this is what your control set operates on. This is how the volume control and the controls actually manipulate the controller. And once we get these little clips out of here, you'll kind of work the front of this right here. And it'll come and slide up. And then you remove all of your control surfaces right here in the shield. And you'll place this to the side. And here we have the guts of the radio. What you have here is, is you have this guard, which protects the battery contacts right here. Right here on these, a lot of times when these things are in-op, there's a fuse right here. A surface mount fuse, and the surface mount fuse will be unserviceable and require replacement. Now we'll go ahead and remove the RF deck and the controller from the frame and then there's this little cross connect pin here. This is your controller which is basically the brains of the radio. This is your RF deck which is the brawn of the radio. Now your RF deck here you can see there is some heat sinking right here because this is your amplifier portion of the radio right here so where it interfaces into the frame it rests on this so you want to have some kind of heat sink compound on there when you reassemble it in order to make sure there's even heat transfer on this frame of the radio itself and you can see this RF deck's in pretty good shape here and you can see your manufacturing date and which revision it is right here on this tag The controller, which is the brains of the radio, like I said, has your controller interface. And then this riser here connects, of course, to your uh, RF deck. 
And this right here is for your crypto module. If you have a desk module that you'll place into this. And you can see the back side of it here. You can see your manufacturer date and your revision number and part number. Now in your controls here, you'll see that you have a rubber gasket that's on top here that runs around your channel selector knob, your volume on off control, and your three position switch. Now generally what I do since these are exposed somewhat to the environment, what I'll do is I'll take all of these sections right here and I'll place these in a detergent and rinse them off and dry them before reassembling it. And you can look at your all your ribbons here and make sure that your ribbons are intact. And this one here looks pretty good to go. And we'll just do a dusting of it and get ready to put this sucker back together after we get it cleaned up. Now what I use to clean the frame is, is I use 91% uh, rubbing alcohol and just a q-tip or applicator and I just run it around the perimeter on the inside of the radio just to get whatever dust or anything is in there and you can see we've pulled a considerable amount of grubbiness out of there the housing itself the outside of it I use 409 and a toothbrush and just scrub 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 well, now that it's somewhat clean, about as good as it can get, I mean, it's, it was pretty grubby to begin with. We'll go ahead and reassemble. So, get yourself some uh, heat sink compound, put a little bit on an applicator. Apply it to the spot here. And that's about as much as you need right there. You just want that post to be covered up. Place the controller in, like that. Take your RF deck, place your RF deck in. Go ahead and seat that connector there, and you make sure that all of your pins are lined up. Just like that there. When you get your boards in, take your guard that you removed, and you're going to place that over top of your pins that you head out. And you can see that protects that junction between the controller and the RF deck. You place your rubber cover that you cleaned in detergent back on top of your control set. Go ahead and slide your cover back on. And you'll feel it snap into place. And then the last will be where your push to talk and your accessory buttons are. Take your riser, slide your riser in carefully. Using your thumb to hold it in place. Close the clip right there like that. And it'll be something similar to that. Get your O-ring. Place your O-ring back on. See how it's retained underneath your clips. Take your emergency button cover. And there's little pins that keep that from moving around. Place that back on there just like that. Now you will look for your housing. Lay your, I'm trying to do it so you can see it. Take that riser with your finger, slide it in the slot, you want to seat that completely. Then while you're holding it in, close those pins in, just like that. Now take your housing, sliding the controls over and the RF connector over. You'll place it in there, you'll feel it go into place. Turn it over and check for your O-ring all around. Snap it into place and your radio is reassembled. 
Now taking the radio, we'll go ahead and put the controls back on. You have your concentric switch. It goes here, and then your channel selection escutcheon, which will go into place just like that. Channel selector knob. Then your volume on off control knob after that right there. Now let's see if it fires up. Now these radios do have an internal diagnostic test mode and then with your later generation Motorola stuff it's very similar in how you access it. Now if you look on the side of the radio here you have your push to talk button and then you have three service buttons. You have one, two, and three. So when you're turning the radio on you would hit this button five times and it does that beeping right there. And now you can see it's going to spit out all the germane information about the radio, the model number, etc., etc., in your uh, equipment that has flash codes. It'll go ahead and spit that out too. And this isn't an RF test mode here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to test the control set. So how we do that is is by merely pressing this button on top right here, which it's going to need a little persuasion, and it puts it in a mode called channel test. Now our first, excuse me, our first test in this mode is going to be to hit our emergency button, and that's going to show you the display while we're holding it down, all the characters of your display. Now when we release it, it's showing this switch number, and it's showing that it's in an open state right now, and it's showing it's in a closed state, so we know that switch is fine. The same thing with your channel selector knob. You can do that. It's 1 through 15, and what you have here is your concentric switch open and closed. Your volume control potentiometer just like such. Your A, B, and C switch. A, B, and C. Your side buttons. Push to talk. Service button 1. Service button 2. And service button 3. So now we know that all of our control sets in this particular radio are functioning normally. So go ahead and turn our power off. And we're going to go ahead and check the RF functionality with very basic service tools. The very simple diagnostic tools we're going to use to test this radio are going to be a frequency counter, a watt meter, a dummy load, and a cable with a suitable SMA adapter. So first we're going to put the radio into a uh, diagnostic mode again. So we're going to turn it on. We're going to hit our service button three, five times. We're going to get all the propaganda out of our radio right now. And it's going to end up saying RF test. When you see it say RF test, go ahead and press your emergency button once. And that gives you channel one in a carrier squelch mode which is basically a very simple way of testing the radio. This also is capable of allowing you to test the radio for all kinds of other variables more sophisticated test equipment to make that happen. So, go ahead and take service button 3 and hit it until you get 4 CSQ. That's channel 4, which for this particular radio would be 444.050 MHz on receive excuse me, for transmit, and then 444.100 megahertz for transmit. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to do some real basic testing with that information. We'll go ahead and remove the antenna from the radio, and we'll attach our RF adapter to the top. Configure our meter for forward power, and set it for a 5 watt range. We'll take our frequency counter and we'll turn our frequency counter on here. Now what we'll do is, is we'll just merely hit the push to talk on our radio. Okay, and you can see we're close in frequency. So frequency resolution needs to be increased, so we want to gate it up a little bit here. And you can see that this radio could use an alignment. Uh, you generally want to be within 150 hertz. Our power output 
should be around 4 watts and we can see in this example here running through this adapter and everything we're looking to be just under 3 watts of RF so we are putting out RF and again we could probably when we put it through an alignment we can go ahead and we can increase that power output turn on your test portable tune it for the frequency of interest hit your push to talk test 5 4 3 2 1 and you can hear we have audio coming through it. Now go ahead and adjust your frequency and go up 50 kilohertz to 444.100 and now hit your push to talk on this particular radio and it'll test the receive. Test 5432112345 and now we've performed a basic test on the radio and ascertained that it is functioning. So using this information, you can see how easy it is to service a commercial piece of equipment like this with just fairly basic tools and determine its serviceability. The next video, what we'll do is we'll actually put one of these through an alignment, and we're not going to go crazy. We're going to go ahead and make sure it's on frequency, and we're going to go ahead and set the power output and uh, check the deviation and a few other fun things. So... I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.